technical problems there. Uh, I want to bring in also. I want to go ahead and bring in my guest that's uh, already here with us, and uh, want them to uh, to introduce themselves to my listening audience and uh, uh, the two Muslim uh, scholars, uh, experts. Their panel of experts is here. Uh, I I want to give you gentlemen an opportunity uh, to introduce yourself and give us a little uh, background about yourself and so forth uh, until my other guests get here. Well, we thank you first for this uh, uh, invitation. Um, and just a correction, we are Muslim, and uh, we just uh, we ask Allah uh, to give us some knowledge and to be from those among the Muslims. I am Dr. Nabil Bayakli, and I am an adjunct professor of uh, Islamic theology at Memphis Theological Seminary here in Memphis, Tennessee. Okay. Well, good evening. My name is Malik. I am the imam right now of Masjid al Salam, which is the Memphis Muslim Society, or the Muslim Society of Memphis. And I'm here today. Uh, we welcome this opportunity of coming to your show. And hopefully this will be a very fruitful panel and discussion. Then we may all learn from one another. Thank you for inviting us. You are more than welcome. Uh, glad to have you all. I want to thank you first uh, for accepting the invitation. I, I know it was a short notice, but uh, I do want to thank you all for uh, honoring the request. And uh, I thought it would be just more than fair to allow a representative uh, from the from the Islamic faith religion to come and uh, engage in this particular debate. And uh, I think we're going to have a great time tonight. Uh, there is sound. Uh, uh, those who in the audience are listening now, if you have any problem with the sound, we want to go ahead and get all the technical problems out of the way. And uh, I'm going to bring in also my other great Christian scholar. Oh, you there? I am here. How are you doing, sir? Great. Great to have you all. <laughs> that the Muslims they say to us always we you know they say to us that the Quran came because the Bible is corrupted so I will start with this question with your guest and I say hello to them salam alaikum and I, I, know I would like to hear the answer thank you okay good uh, let me let me jump in real quick I want to make sure do anybody hear any echo in the background No echo. Okay, good. Want to make sure um, that there are no echoes in the background, and uh, I think we are ready to go. Those who are just tuning in to the Black Conservative Show here on Blog Talk Radio, we bring you the best possible source. This is your one stop for truth. We deal with the actual facts. 
the hard facts, not stubborn facts. But, and uh, this show was designed and created to inform and educate our caller, callers and listeners on the facts. So what is the truth? Truth is not based on an emotion. It is not based on a feeling. A feeling. But truth is based on the facts. And for those who believe in the inspired Word of God, truth is based on uh, the Word of God. So we have uh, put together this debate tonight. Uh, I have uh, on both sides uh, the spectrum, uh, Muslims uh, from the Islamic faith, and a representative of Christianity and Islam. And we're going to go and, and get ready to engage in the debate. Uh, each individual would have uh, uh, 90 seconds to give a rebuttal if you have an objection uh, to what your opponent is saying. Uh, you have uh, you would have uh, 90 seconds uh, to give a response back. Also, uh, at the start of the debate, you will be allowed five minutes to give an open presentation uh, on both sides. And after that five-minute presentation, then we will go into the rebuttal where you would have 90 seconds to rebut back and forth. And if they go like that for the next hour and a half. <laughs> and uh, uh, the rules are, and I don't think I have to enlighten any of you all on the rules, uh, is to stick with the issue, stick with the facts, uh, no at humming at hominem attacks, no personal attacks, but stick with the person's uh, argument at hand and address that person's argument. And uh, I think we'll all uh, be happy campers with that. And we're going to uh, deal with that here on the Black Conservative Show. And uh, going to take a little short break, a little short break, and then we're going to come back and we're going to start uh, this discussion is the Quran the Word of God? Here on the Black Conservative Show, hold tight, callers. We'll be right back. Now at Obama headquarters, Al Sharpton continues to try to draw out Barack for a debate in the street. Eleven was not an inside job. Daddy, break! Sharpton continues to try to draw out Barack for a debate in the street. And once again, we're back here live on Blog Talk Radio, bringing you the best possible source. I'm your host, the Black Conservative. The number to call in is 347-326-9268 if you want to get in on the come in and top it for today uh, you can call in right now we are ready to take your call all right we're back here on the black conservative show getting ready to start the debate uh, gentlemen you can let me know uh, which one of you guys want to uh, go first in your presentation, uh, we can flip the coin, so everybody can't speak at the same time. No, it's okay time. for me. Let us let us give it to the to the guest. You know, I say I say to them, "Salamu alaikum," and I would like to hear from them first. And thank you very much. Okay, Christian, uh, Christian first is going to go, uh, and I'm calling him by his screen name, Christian first. Uh, who is this, uh, the Christian scholar? Oh, uh, Christian Prince. This is my name. Okay, good. Christian Prince. Christian Prince is going to go first for those who just no, tune into the show. No, no, I, I, no, sorry. I said, I said let your guests to go first because, you know, for me, I would like to hear them really, you know, because I am the one who oh, started okay. really, so I would like to hear them. Uh, yes, pardon. Yes. Okay, okay. I didn't hear that. All right. My guest is going to go first, and uh, they're going to give a five-minute uh, presentation. 
and then uh, Christian, Christian Prince is going to come um, behind them and up to the five minutes presentation uh, of the opening argument. Then we'll go into a 90 minute uh, respond and rebuttal to the objection one may have concerning their. This is going to go first, and uh, they're going to give a five minute uh, presentation. And then uh, Christian Prince is going to come uh, behind them and up to the five minute presentation uh, of the opening argument. Then we'll go into a 90 minute uh, respond and rebuttal to the objections one may have concerning the, <laughs> the position of their opponent. Uh, again, those who have just tuned into the Black Conservative Show, I uh, want to welcome you to the debate tonight between Muslims uh, and Christians here on the on Blog Talk Radio. All right, my guest is going to the Muslims is going to go first, and uh, guys, we're going to hear what you have to say. You have five minutes. Go ahead. All right, thank you once again, and we say wa alaikum salam to also the other guests on the other end. And uh, like I said earlier, we welcome this opportunity to be able to speak to you. And what we're going to say is more to the audience, uh, because we know our guest probably is as knowledgeable as um, probably we are about the Quran, to really know that it is the true word of God. Um, through history, because many things, if you want to understand how things are, you usually have to go to history. And when you go back to history, it helps you better understand the present time or whatever is occurring right in front of you. Uh, God, we call him Allah as he called himself Allah. And uh, other people from other religious um, affiliation would also call him another name. Therefore, he is the one who is the creator, and we know that, and everybody agree to that. As there are only three things that a person may question, and many of the philosophers question those three and ask about the origin of man, and also what man is doing here on earth, and where man is going after death. We know for sure that if one exists, that means he is either the result of creation or of evolution. But still, mankind, everybody believes that they are the fruit of creation. And when we talk about creation, there is always a creator and also creature. Meaning the creator must be the supreme being the one who caused anything else to exist beside him. Therefore, he as the one who created everybody, he is as the one who created Adam and Eve and Noah and all prophets and messengers, you name them, as it is shown in the Bible or in the Quran, he must be the sender of all prophets and messengers peace be upon them all. Now, why did God send prophets like Noah, or send Abraham, or send Moses, or send Jesus, or any other prophet in between them, or after them? That means God had a message to take to people, and since he is a perfect being, and not equal to what he has created, therefore he has to bring a person who is like us, as he said in the Quran, if we were angels, then he would of course send an angel. Now, then there should be a message coming from that God to mankind. And the purpose of the message is to have mankind recognize how much of nothing they are and how great Almighty God Allah is so that they can submit to that one and true God who has no partner. So then he sent prophets and sent messengers and gave them books. So those books among them 
or the most famous among them is the Torah, or you can say also the, 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 the Gospel, or any other book that has been mentioned, mentioned in revealed books or in the Quran. Now, is the Quran the Word of God? And I would say, is the Quran the Word of Allah? Because not everything named God is Allah, because Allah is unique. Therefore, to answer that question, I would like to take you and I all and the audience, and I thank them once again for turning in to listen to us, that uh, the Word of God is always a miracle. And not only a miracle, but also the miracle of the miracle. And what a miracle is, it is something which is beyond man's imagination, or something which is, uh, goes over the human mentality that they cannot comprehend sometimes. Then when that happens, they know this is a miracle. Like, if a person dies and another person raises him from the dead, we say this is a miracle because that is very strange and is beyond the imagination of mankind. Therefore, for God to send a message to the people, that message has to be a miracle. So Moses received a book. And in that book, God, Allah, revealed to Moses how he was dealing with actually Pharaoh and the magicians that Pharaoh invited. So Moses, as he was holding onto his stick, actually performed with the permission of God a miracle which of course would prove to his people that this is not from man, this must come from a being more perfect than us. And Jesus was sent to the people of Israel. And Jesus came and it was a time when sicknesses or illnesses were very serious and science uh, were not developed in a way to heal people. So he came as a healer. Then he could raise a person from the dead and make a blind to see and make a limping man to walk. So this miracle showed that what he had was not from God. Now when it comes to Prophet Muhammad and all the prophecies were from them, yes, he was in a time when actually Arab people or the world was moving to another step, to another stage which was about literature, or poetry, or anything related to man uh, intellectual uh, 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 status. Now the intellectuality of man at the time was taking them to sometimes speaking a language that people, or even the Arabs, and I know our friend on the other hand, uh, on the other end of the line, will understand what I'm saying, that even uh, Arabs, who were pure Arabs, sometimes could not really understand some of the verses or the words of the Quran. And it was revealed to one who has never been to school, didn't know how to read or write. How could we speak such a language which was actually going beyond people's understanding or imagination that he had to actually break it down in order to reach the subconsciousness of the people at that very time. Okay, now, that must be time. Okay, that's five minutes there. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Five minutes, there. Uh, now we're going to allow Christian Prince uh, to give uh, his presentation and a rebuttal or respond uh, for five minutes to what was just said. And once Christian Prince is done, then we will narrow it down the back and forth cross examination to 90 minutes. Whoa, not, not 90 minutes, but 90 seconds. And uh, after that, we'll be able to, we're going to take some questions and call to brother after the last 30 minutes of the show or 20 minutes of the show. Christian Prince, you are on, you have five minutes to uh, make your case to brother after the last 30 minutes of the show or 20 minutes of the show. Christian Prince, you are on, you have five minutes to uh, make your case. Okay, thank you very much. I want to say thank you for, uh, uh, I don't know his name, by the way, if you can tell me his name, I would be glad to know I'm talking to who. His name is Imam Malik. Uh, 
Jamal Malik, how are you doing, Jamal? Uh, how are you? Know, you? First, I'm fine, thank you. You know, first of all, yeah, it's not, you know, uh, uh, you know, proving a religion is not about giving a speech about uh, we don't believe in evolution. And I'm, I'm not an atheist, I'm a Christian. So we believe in God, and we believe that this universe created by God. So there's no need to go and talk about those who speak that, oh, you know what, things happen by accident. Let us go to the topic. You said that the miracles of Muhammad is the Quran. Now the Quran says, if this book is not from God, you will find in it a lot of contradiction. If it's not from Allah. And we will show everybody with us that this book is not only having contradiction, it's full of it. Actually, it's a, it's a huge book of contradiction. But before we go there, we want to know why Islam even came, what the reason of Muhammad to become a prophet. Everything has a reason. You know, I don't think God, he just sent prophets for fun. He sent them for a reason. Now, before Islam, there is a lot of prophets who came. According to Islam, there is 124,000 prophets. Imagine, 124,000 prophets. According to Islam, Muhammad is the last one. He is the final, and this is the end. That's it. There's no more prophets to come. But we need to know why Allah decided to send this man to be the last prophet and what was wrong. Because as you see, for sure there was something very wrong. 124,000 less one, which means Muhammad, all of them they could not accomplish anything. All of them they could not save anyone. All their books is gone. All their books is corrupted. And there is only one, only one, he is going to do what 124,000 almost they could not do. And for us as a Christian, when we look at the picture, we see there is something wrong in there. Why Allah is sending all those prophets when they will not do anything? What they accomplish, all of them. What Moses did, he did nothing according to Islam. What Jesus did, he did nothing according to Islam. So why Allah is sending them? And before we go there, I would like to ask you, when you start responding to me to answer a very specific question. The question is, is it true what the Muslims they say to us that Allah, the God of Islam, He sent Muhammad, the Prophet of Islam, because the Bible of the Christian was corrupted Is that because of the corruption of that book? Or Allah he was going to send him anyway if the Bible is corrupted or not? I want a clear answer. I give the rest of my time to our uh, 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 guest uh, Jamal and let us see what he will say as an answer. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, you can now give uh, your 97 uh, rebuttal to what he just said there. Go ahead. All right. Um, thank you very much once again for that question. I think we are not here to discuss whether the Bible was corrupted or not. We would like to also remain in what the topic is and we will demonstrate. Now, if we ask the question, is the, is the Qur'an the word of Allah or the word of God, then whoever does not see it as the word of God should bring their argument and demonstrate that it is not the word of God. But we are not here to talk about the Bible. If you want to talk about the Bible, you can invite us one other time and we will talk about the Bible. And I'll introduce my brother, Dr. Nabil, to go ahead and bring clarification on that. Uh, uh, well, to say that the Quran descended just because the Bible was corrupt, that's not really a, uh, a proper statement according to Islamic creed. Uh, Allah revealed the Quran as the Quran says to us, Alif Lam Mim, Dalik Al Kitab Ulayhi Bafi, Hudan al Muttaqi. 
uh, which means that that book there is no doubt in it, uh, the guidance for those who are righteous. So thus, Allah revealed the Quran as a guidance to mankind, not because the uh, the, uh, the the Bible uh, or because of uh, 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 the other prophets couldn't do anything. That's not that is a fallacy. That's, uh, that in Islam we don't believe in that. We believe that all prophets and messengers were sent with a, with a proper message, and uh, uh, they did fulfill what uh, what the purpose of their life was. Uh, so we do not uh, believe that all the 124,000, yes, uh, 124,000 prophets and messengers that were sent, we don't believe that uh, they didn't fulfill their uh, uh, duties and their missions. No, we do believe that they fulfilled their... All right, guys, I'm going to have to jump in. Yeah, the 90 seconds there. Uh, we want to keep it rolling. Uh, you can always come back and, and uh, pick up from there. Uh, go ahead. Christian friends that you have uh, Go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. Well, uh, I'm not uh, going over the Bible just uh, to debate about the Bible. The reason I'm asking, because supposedly there is a reason for the Prophet of Islam to come. If the Prophet of Islam, he is coming just to complete what it was before him, this is mean that the Bible was not corrupted. If the Bible was corrupted, this is the reason of Muhammad to come to, you know, to, to complete what it was missing. There's something wrong happened, and this is why he came. But anyway, we will not waste our time as long as we don't like to talk about this topic. I want to ask them, first time the Prophet of Islam, he saw an angel. And this angel, supposedly, it was uh, Gabriel. What was the proof for Muslims that it was Gabriel, according to the books of Islam, Muhammad he did not prove anything about himself that he is a person who saw an angel except what happened to him with his wife Khadija. When he saw his wife Khadija, sorry, when he saw uh, uh, an angel, he did not know that this is an angel. So he asked his wife that I am seeing someone. And she told him, when you see him again, let me know. Then, she asked him to do something very weird. I'm going to post the link. Somebody else will post it for me. Christ first, you will post it in the room, in the, in the chat. So, I, I want your guests to open and read with me, please. And read it for me and read for us, all of us, what is the book of Asira is saying there. This is Sirat Ibn Hisham, volume number one, and the, the, the name of the chapter, Intihanu Khadija Burhan al -Wahik. The proof or the test Khadija she did to prove the inspiration of Allah. And there you will see Khadija, she is asking the Prophet to sit in the top of her right leg. Then she asked him, do you still see that guy in the room? He said, yes. Then she asked him to move First, sorry, first for the, for the, the left leg. Then she asked him to the uh, uh, right leg. And each time she asked him, still you see him? Each time he said, yes, I see him. Then she asked him, after taking off her uh, whatever clothes or whatever she is having, and she asked him to sit in the top of her, asking him, do you still see him? He said, no. She said, the glory to Allah, this is an angel. I never heard about an angel. He did not announce himself to his prophet saying, I am an angel. And I never heard about a prophet. Do you hear me? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I never heard about a prophet. Go ahead, go ahead. He go to his wife, he go to his wife. He go to his wife and he say to her, I need you to tell me if this is an angel or not. I suppose he is a prophet. And if you look at the way she proved to him that he is a prophet, when she asked him to sit in the top of her, she said to him, do you still see him? He said, no. She said, the glory to Allah, this is an angel. Now, what sitting in the top of his wife have to do to prove to us that this is, was an angel? The mic is yours. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Christian. Thanks for this uh, genuine question. Uh, and I'm glad, I hope that the audience are really listening carefully. 
uh, when the Prophet وسلم, received the first message, Iqra, he was in the uh, cave of Iraq. And right there, actually, uh, he himself was scared. And he didn't know what he was seeing. When he ran to his house, and Khadija, his wife, Khadija uh, cave of Iraq. And right there, actually, uh, he himself was scared. And he didn't know what he was seeing. When he ran to his house, and Khadija, his wife, Khadija Kubra, radiallahu anha, was known for her shim, for her wisdom, and for her knowledge, and for her education. So the Prophet, وسلم, coming home, trembled and uh, scared. He was telling his wife, Zammiluni, Zammiluni, which means hide me, hide me, because he was very scared of what he had seen. He never seen an angel before. And Archangel Gabriel, alayhi salam, had told him, I am Gabriel. I am the angel of Allah. And I am saying, telling you that you are going to be the message. You're going to be the messenger for this ummah, for the nation of Prophet Muhammad and for this world. So it's not that uh, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, didn't get the message first from Jibreel, but being the Prophet the way, the humble nature of the Prophet وسلم, he was saying himself, he was saying that I don't know if I am seeing any, uh, uh, I'm hearing voices and I'm seeing uh, things. So he himself wasn't really sure. So when he came to Khadija radiallahu anha, Khadija, uh, having knowledge of the people of Ahl al-Kitab and other nations, which means the Jews and the Christians and al-Hanif, al-Din al-Hanif, which means the religion of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, then she knew an angel is not going to be present at the time when a man is going to uh, 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 have a privacy with his wife. So when she told him, sit on my right side, that's okay, the angel can be there. When she told him, sit on the left side, then that's okay, the angel can be there. But when she told him to sit in a position as a husband would be sitting with his wife, then the angel, out of uh, respect and honor for, for, this, for, the, for the relationship of a husband and wife, then the angel would leave them for their own privacy. Now, okay, what's the guys, problem a bit over. having a woman? What's that, the problem? That. I think the, pro the brother, the uh, Christian, have a problem with a husband listening to his wife. For us, this is the biggest lesson, that you and your wife are two of one. That you always ask your wife and ask for some uh, guidance from her as well. And that's okay, the up. way all the fallacies about Islam that they treat the wives as a second class. Okay, Thank time's you. up. Thank you for your question. Okay, good. Uh, a little bit over 90 seconds there. Uh, Christian friends, you go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you. He, you know, he said, and uh, uh, as we understand from what he said, that when the Prophet, he have a sexual position with his wife, the angel, he decide to leave. Now, then, how... Khadija, she learned that angels don't stay if there is sex in the room. Like, you know, me, myself, I am an adult man. I never heard that angels will leave me. So what if I am having sex with my wife? You know, she, he's an angel. He will not get uh, excited. He will not get, uh, forgive me for the word, horny. He will not get, uh, he is, he's an angel, you know. And according to Islam, angels always is found in you. Wherever you go, there's two angels, one in the left and one in the right. So even when you have sex, they are with you. Even Muhammad, he said, before you have intercourse with your wife, you have to say the word Bismillah, Bismillah and, you know, seek refuge of Allah before you have intercourse with your wife. So Allah will protect you. How will he protect you? Because the angels will keep the Satan away from you. So angels even with you, according to your prophet, even when you have sex. So there is no reason for the angel to get out. This is number one. Number two, you said that... The angel told him, I am Jibreel. I want you to show me that. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. I will post it. I want you to open the link, please. Hadith number 4626. Kitab al-Tafsir. There is nowhere when Muhammad, he saw the angel first time, that the angel, he said to him, you know what? I am Jibreel. 
Actually, Jibreel, he did not mention his name at all. He starts right away. He came to Muhammad. He said to him, read. And you will see something there, too, very weird in this story. He starts squeezing him. Now, if I asked you what the squeezing have to do with an angel speaking to his prophet, I don't know what you... I, I do not know what you will say to me. But still, I want you to read again, please, the hadith I posted. I hope, you know, because I cannot uh, go and log on in the chat. Somebody else is posting the hadith for me. So I want you, please, to open the, the, the link and read for me. And you will see that Muhammad, until that time, he never heard of, of the name Jubail. He had no idea. And the one who told him about who is the name of the angel, it was Waraq ibn Nawfal. Waraq ibn Nawfal, he is the one who said, Oh, this is a Jibreel. So, what you said to me with my respect to you is absolutely not true. Secondly, what we see in here, that the family of his wife, they are the one who is deciding that, okay, you know what, you are a prophet, and this is an angel. And even they gave him the name. Now, how Waraq ibn Nawfal he knew? He is a prophet. He, he was inspired. How many prophets in Islam? It's supposed it's only one, and the one is Muhammad. So what do you like to say to me, sir? Mike is yours. May I go ahead? Yeah, please. All right, thank you very much. First of all, Warakat ibn Nawfal did not mention to him that this is Jibreel. Warakat said to him, this is what used to come to Musa. And I wish I were there when your people will chase you away from this city in order to help you. The hadith you are referring to in Sahih al-Bukhari is an authentic hadith. And I wish that you would go and read the hadith again word by word in order to better understand as you are an Arab and me not an Arab being able to understand this Arabic language could clearly see that what you are saying word to word is not actually what the hadith is talking about. Now, in order for somebody to tell Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him that he, what the, 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 the creature of God he saw, he did not see Jibreel as is, as he is. But he looked at his wife and left. But see that Jibreel actually covers all area. He could not see Jibreel as is, as Allah created him. The only one time he saw Jibreel as he was, was in the Isra wal Mi'raj when they reached the room to her. And I will come to that if you want later to show the authenticity of the Word of God as a miracle that people can clearly understand. Now, back to your question. You are using Sahih al-Bukhari. So if you think that the revelation that Prophet Muhammad peace upon him brought is not true, so how you as an Arab who understands Arabic want to use that same revelation in order to contradict this revelation if contradict is there as you can see. But no way. But you are using this because you know for sure that this is a good reference that you can turn to in order to justify whatever misunderstanding or misinterpretation or miscomprehension you may have on the verses of the Quran. Now back to our topic because we do not want to step away from our topic dealing with Hadith while we have the verses of God in the Quran that is the very fire of the truth in the Bible in our book. I'm glad that this is not our topic today. We would like to debate this one more time with you. But I want you, with all due respect, to show me in the Quran, as you said earlier, that it is a book of ikhtilaf. It is a book of full of contradiction. Show me, pick up the Quran. I understand and I know you must have one right in front of you. Open the Quran and show me where in the Quran has Allah revealed verses contradicting one to another. And I may today and hope but from this session, from this time, you will understand the language of Arabic better today. Okay. Time is up. Okay. Thank time you is very, up. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, first, 
First, I want, I want, uh, I want, uh, one back. Okay, I want. Now, let me say this here, uh, to, uh, the Muslim, uh, 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 uh representatives. Uh, we, I don't think the HID is, is off the limit here. And the reason I say, you know, the reason why I say the HID is not off the limit, because, uh, it is, uh, second in authority to the Quran. There are Muslims who quote the Hadith. Of course, they quote parts of the Hadith that they think is in agreement with the Quran. Uh, so I don't think quoting the Hadith is uh, uh, off limits here. So, well, if, I may, if I may bring clarification to you, I think we all understand the English language because the topic is Quran is the Quran, the Word of God. If you say is the Quran and Hadith a revelation from God? Yes. Then we can open that Is. Quran is the Quran, the Word of God. If you say, is the Quran and Hadith a revelation from God? Yes. Then we can open that window in order to look through it. But you mentioned the Quran, and the Quran is a book. Start from chapter 1 to chapter 114. This is why I brought okay. that question. Okay. Right. So, I think it's my time now. I think it's my time. Yeah. Thank you. Sir. Go Thank ahead. You, Jamal. Okay. I don't think Jamal, first, the first, here. Yeah. first I want you to open Jamal. Jamal, I want you first to open the hadith I post for you in the, in the chat. And you will see there, it says the name Jibreel. He said to him, this is the same as the angel who came to Moses. And it's between two brackets, the name Jibreel. But I understand you don't want to go there. The reason I mention this, because Muslims, when they say to us the prophet of Islam is a prophet, as you see, it's not even him. He do not know he is a prophet yet. It is people who they are saying to him he is a prophet. And not only that, you will see that the prophet of Islam himself, he imagines things. You know, there's a hadith even, there's many hadith. They are saying that the prophet used to imagine himself doing things, including having sexual intercourse with his wife when he never did. A hadith in al-Bukhari saying it clearly. The Prophet used to imagine himself doing things he never ever did. Now, how I can trust a man? He always imagined things happen to him, but he never did it. I will post the hadith too for this one from Sahih al-Bukhari. And you will see in your eyes that the Prophet he was, not knowing what he is doing. And when the, a man, he reached the point, he say things or he do things, he himself do not know what he is doing, it means there is something wrong about him. You know, right now if I go and I want to join any job, and I say things, I, I say to them, oh, I imagine it was happening. And people, they will say, with my respect to you, I'm not trying to insult, they will say, you know what, you are crazy. Now, how I can trust the Prophet of Islam words that he saw someone because he is the only one seeing that one. It is was his wife and his uh, her cousin, Waraka, saying to us, oh, his name is Jibreel, and you know what, you are a prophet. But anyway, as long you are the one who mentioned to us, you, you want to go to the contradiction, and you mentioned in the first, in the, in the opening, the name of the Pharaoh. I want you to open with me chapter Eunice, verse number 90, and you will see in there, it says, that the Pharaoh, uh, he became a Muslim. He, you know, he, he, he believed in Allah. And he became a Muslim. If you go to chapter, 17, uh, chapter Isra 17, verse number 102, 103, you will see that the Pharaoh, he died, and he was still an infidel. He is a kafir. And this is a contradiction. I think my time, I don't know if my time is still up, but I would like to hear about this one so we can continue in more contradiction. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, uh, uh, Prince, for this uh, valuable uh, remark. Uh, the Quran never states that uh, Fir'aun, Allah, has ever became a Muslim. Uh, I think uh, you have some kind of of misunderstanding uh, is that because as Fir'aun was about to was about to die 
was about to draw, uh, to, to you know to uh, to drown uh, as he was following uh, Musa and his uh, the Israelites. Uh, then he says, "Amantu bi Rabbi Musa." He says, "I believe in the Lord of Musa because he saw death." He knew that he couldn't really touch Musa alayhi salam and he's not able to get after the Israelites. And that the Lord of Musa alayhi salam was able to save Musa. So he didn't say these statements out of belief. He said these statements out of that he came to the realization of them. So thus, uh, that does not make a, a person becoming a Muslim. The Prophet Sallallahu says that the man will take his, uh, his iman will be accepted as long as he doesn't get to the state of ghargara, which means the state in which he sees the soul or realizes the soul is about to come out. That's, that's too late now. And Fir'aun is the biggest example actually for us. And I'm glad that you brought this uh, confusion that you have, so hopefully it will be clarified for you. That really as Muslims and as we read the Qur'an and as we pray with the Qur'an and as we recite the Qur'an, it's never, never told, we never to believe that Fir'aun uh, was or became a Muslim and followed uh, the message of Musa alayhi uh, salatu Now, uh, thank you. Uh, well, thank you. Well, you know, if you read with me, sir, you know, uh, it says it clearly, آمنت أنه لا إله إلا الذي آمنت به بن آمنت به بنو إسرائيل وأنا من المسلمين. I am a Muslim and this is in here there is no sword. There is no sword in here. This is not somebody putting a sword in your neck saying to you either you became a Muslim. It was a choice he made because he saw that this is the truth and this is what the Quran is saying. And in the top of that, why we don't go and read the explanation and the explanation will be said to us. If he became a Muslim or not, if you open Ibn Kathir or Al-Qurtubi or Al-Jalalain, you will see that Ibn Kathir, he agree that uh, 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 the Pharaoh, he accepted Islam and he became a Muslim. So what you are saying to me, really, it's not what the explanation, you know, saying. Actually, he's saying, وَكَفَرْنَا بِمَا كُنَّا بِهِ مُشْرِكِينَ فَلَمْ يَكُوا يَنْفَعُهُمْ إِيمَانَهُمْ لَمَّا رَأُوا بَأْسَنَا سُنَّةُ اللَّهِ لَتْ بِخْلَتْ فِي عِبَادِهِ وَخَسِرَ هُنَالِكَ الْكَافِرُونَ So, open the explanation and you will see that you are wrong in that point. So, I made my first point about contradiction regarding the Pharaoh. Now, if I ask no, you... I'm sorry, I'm sorry to, to, to interrupt. You haven't made your first point about contradiction because you haven't shown any contradiction in there. Because we're trying to correct you. You have a misunderstanding of even the Arabic language. I'm sorry, uh, even if you are in error. Because uh, earlier when you mentioned the Hadith in Bukhari saying that there is the word Jibril in there, you yourself mentioned Jibril in between brackets, meaning that word Jibril is not from the Hadith, but it is from the one who wrote the Hadith to explain to you that that means Jibril, but the word Jibril did not come out of the mouth of Waraka ibn Nawfal. That's why... And the verses you just mentioned in Surah Yunus, and once again, when you mention for just the audience and for the respect we, have, we owe to the audience for them to go back and read for themselves, please mention to them the number of the ayah and the chapter because they will need to go back and see exactly the truth of what you say or maybe the misunderstanding that you have on these verses. And to proceed. If I, if I may, because I interrupted you, or I will let you finish okay, and then I'll come back. Let me jump, let me jump in here, guys. Sure. Let me jump in here real quick. <laughs> uh, we're losing a little bit of time. Ninety seconds response. Each, each side have 90 seconds to respond back. Uh, I'm giving you just a little more time than 90 seconds, maybe about uh, 120 seconds. But uh, there again, uh, that's limited to 90 seconds. We want to give a proper response back. Uh, go ahead, uh, Chris, Chris, you you now have okay. 90 seconds to give okay. a response. Okay, thank you. First, he just agreed that the one who wrote the hadith, he put between two pockets the word Jibreel. 
Now, are you going to say it's my fault to see the word Jibreel and don't, do you want me not to read it? If it's not there, the Muslim should be honest in, in, in their words and not to add words does not exist. If the hadith doesn't say Jibreel, why you add it? It doesn't make sense. This is not honest by adding words for something, put it in the mouth of somebody, and this is especially it's about the Prophet himself. You know, secondly, I posted the hadith, and actually I posted the website, and I posted the hadith number. I said, chapter Yunus, which is number 10, verse number 90. And this is a Jalalain. I will post for you a Jalalain. I will post for you Ibn Kathir. I hope they are posting it for you in the, ch in, the, in the chat there. And you can open and you can see. It doesn't say that he did not become a Muslim. It's saying the opposite. It's saying he accepted Islam. He embraced Islam. So, you, what you are saying to me is not true. And you know, it, it, it's really weird that the Muslims suddenly they don't accept their own explanation. The scholars of Islam, the highest scholars of Islam, they do not know Islam suddenly. And you are the one right now is going to correct a Jalalain. So what do you think about what Jalalain is saying in the front of your eyes? The mic is yours. And you can open and you can see. It doesn't say that he did not become a Muslim. It's saying the opposite. It's saying he accepted Islam. He embraced Islam. So you, what you are saying to me is not true. And you, you know, it, it's really weird that the Muslims suddenly they don't accept their own explanation. The scholars of Islam, the highest scholars of Islam, they do not know Islam suddenly. And you are the one right now is going to correct a Jalalain. So what do you think about what Jalalain is saying in the front of your eyes? The mic is yours. Okay, uh, uh, Mr. Prince, uh, we will read the verse for you, and then we will read the translation, so that the audience will see if there was a misunderstanding on your side, or is it that something that we are saying? أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تجاوزنا ببني إسرائيل البحر فأتبعهم فرعون وجنوده بغيا وعدوى حتى إذا أدركه الغرق قال آمنت أنه لا إله إلا الذي آمنت به بنو إسرائيل وأنا من المسلمين The next verse which that's how you read the Quran in context says which means we took the children of Israel across the sea Pharaoh and his host followed them in insolence and spite at length when overwhelmed with the flood when overwhelmed with the flood he said I believe that there is no God except him whom the children of Israel believe in I am of those who submit. And that in the next verse, Allah is answering back here. Allah is answering back in the verse 91. And that's how you read the Quran in context. It was said to him, Oh no, now. But a little while before, wasn't the rebellion? And that right, is that is that and violent. Okay. And that's the okay. Quran. Right. You Move it. Man, is that uh, up there, Chris and Chris, go ahead. You have 90 seconds. Okay, well, well, you know, uh, Mr. Jamal, I did post for you a Jalalain, and you did not read a Jalalain, because simply a Jalalain agree with me and don't agree with you. But I understand, you know, still you want to defend your religion, I understand that. Let us move to something else. According to your prophet, in the Quran, in uh, Surah Al-Tariq, he is saying, and I will post Ibn Kathir as an explanation. So nobody can say, you know what, you have a wrong explanation. This is Ibn Kathir. I hope they will post it for you in there. I want you to open with me, please. And you will see your prophet saying that the human being, he is created from a gushing fluid coming from the backbone and the ribs. According to the explanation, according to the hadith of your it was the backbone of the man and the ribs of the women. Now, if I want to ask you, please, what is coming from the backbone of the man and what is coming from the ribs of the women? And I want you, to please, to open and read for me what your prophet himself is saying and what is written in the explanation of Abi Kathir. And as you see, I'm not explaining your Quran and I have no right to explain the Quran because the Quran says only the ulama can explain the Quran and Allah. And this is the ulama, this is Ibn Kathir, and this is the hadith of your prophet. So please, let us concentrate, not you explaining, not me explaining. 
Let us go by the scholars, and whatever else they say, we should accept. I would like you to open the page and read for us, please. The whole page. Thank you. Thank you once again for that um, a verse in Surah al Tariq, which is uh, uh, one of the chapters of the Quran. And the verse you read was verse 6 and 7 for our audience to hear what we are saying. Allah says in the Quran, خُلِقَ مِمَّا إِنْ دَافِقَ يَخْرُجُ مِنْ بَيْنِ الصُّلْبِ وَالتَّرَائِبِ Allah says he is uh, created, meaning man, of course, is created from a drop emitted, proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs. Listen to the word. From between the back bone and the ribs. He is not telling you from the backbone. He is not telling you from the ribs. The word bayna, you know Arabic, is very significant in here. Now, since you have, of course, this opportunity to deal with about the creation of God, we would like to show you what in the world, in the seventh century, could determine what science has discovered these days about how a human being... Okay, guys, hold that thought. Uh, your 90 seconds is up there. Hold that no, thought. I, 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 I want to give him my time. Go ahead, no, Fred, you no, have no, 90 seconds. I want to give him my time as a gift to him because still he has to make a point, and I think it's, uh, it's his right to answer more. So I will give you my extra minute for you to answer me. Please go and read the explanation of Ibn Kathir. Don't tell me about science, please. Ibn Kathir is giving us the answer. Let us read first Ibn Kathir. Uh, Ibn, 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 Kathir and... Ibn Kathir is only one of the interpreters. He's not the final reference. There are, we have many other interpreters as well. And I thank you very much for you giving me your time. That means you are willing to learn tonight. Now, to proceed, Allah says, and I was telling you, how do you want to avoid science as an intellectual? If you want to prove things today and nowadays, Quran has given you the opportunity on the 7th century to your ancestors to know what science could not even bring up at the very moment. But I'm telling you that what Quran is saying today was explained clearly and in detail by science, and you go and study embryology, you will see what Allah has said as is today what the scientists have brought up as an explanation. Now, for you and I who are not scientists, we will be very happy to read in between these words and understand that Allah, God, the way He created you and I, in a very sophisticated way, with the mixture of elements from our bodies, as he said, by the Sunni what life between the backbone and the ribs. Now your question was, what is coming from the backbone or from the ribs? And I corrected you, say it is not coming from the backbone or from the ribs. It is coming be between the backbone and the ribs. Now then, you correct your and your question. If you want to really understand, we proceed as Allah says. Surely, God is able to bring him back to life. Okay, now. that's 90 seconds. I had to cut you off there. Uh, that's okay, 90 thank seconds. you. Um, well, still, uh, still, they don't want to read Ibn Kathir. Because Ibn Kathir, okay. Thank, thank you. Still, they don't want to read Ibn Kathir because Ibn Kathir will prove that this is a very huge mistake. If you go and open with me, it says it clearly. As you said, you are saying from between, this is the point you are making, right? From between the ribs and the backbone. You know, why Allah he did not stay from between the, the, the toes and the nose? This is a huge area, you know? What is left between the backbone and the ribs? Now, I want to ask you, if you read with me, Ibn Kathir, he is saying that the fluid of the women, it's gushing fluid, it is light, yellow, texture. It is a yellow texture. This is your prophet explanation. And he's saying there, the back of the man and the ribs of the women is the fluid. 
is a yellow fine in texture, the child will not be born except from both of them. Now, what is the yellow texture is coming from whatever place you want, will make the baby created. The egg is not a yellow texture, and the, the egg is not a fluid. And what is your prophet describing, forgive us, you know, guys, for using the language, it's simply when the women, she get, uh, uh, you know, excited, there is a liquid. That liquid, this is what your prophet describing, and the proof, the color of the liquid. And he is saying it's coming from the ribs of the women. If you read with me, you will see it says, that the ribs is exactly the chest place, really between the backbone and the ribs, meaning the backbone or loins of the man and, uh, and the ribs of the women, which is referring to her chest. I'm not the one saying that. So this is why I want you to read. But you are re rejecting to read because you cannot, you know, make it as something correct unless you ignore what your scholars and what your prophet himself is saying. So, I want you please to read from, does it say really, from the chest, does it mean, does it say, that, which is referring to hair chest, I want you to read that word exactly. This is mean, it's not between, it is in that area, in the chest, the ribs. This is where that yellow texture, this is where that yellow texture is from for the women. Can you tell me what is that yellow texture of the women, and what the ribs have to do with it? Mike is yours. Thank you very much. First of all, scientifically speaking, um, the verse... Let me jump in here for a minute. Before you, before you answer that question, just hold one moment. I, I got uh, a little technical problem here. Okay, let me fix this. Okay. All right, go ahead. Okay, I was saying, scientifically speaking, the verse means that, of course, the sexual organs are located between the backbone and the rib. And this was revealed in the 7th century. And science just could not talk about it because they were at not that level, because Prophet Muhammad came with a message that were beyond the level of science or anything that came from man. Now, you read that hadith you are talking about that Ibn Kathir is referring to, and I will tell to you to be sincere enough to accept the truth when it is mentioned. If you go to that same hadith in the books of fiqh, go to a book, since you are familiar with our books, then go to Bulugh al-Maram, which is a book of fiqh written by al hafiz Ibn Hadar al asqalani and you will see that hadith was also reported by Maimuna, the wife of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon radiallahu anha wa radaha. This is how it goes. In that hadith, they were, you know, when a woman is in her cycle, they cannot pray, they cannot fast, and you know that better, since I know you must have relatives as Muslims. Then, those women, sometimes they would see certain liquids coming out of them, and they wouldn't determine whether this is part of the blood of their cycle, so as to abstain from praying or fasting or anything like that. And Prophet Muhammad responded to her and said, Go, and if you sit on a container full of water, and that liquid will drop in the water, if it has the color as safra, yellow, then you know it is not the blood of the cycle, then you may continue to oh, right. say that's or to nice. pass. That's now, that's I haven't nice. answered yet. Let me jump in here, uh, guys, since you are on this discussion, since you are on uh, this discussion, I will jump in. And uh, just before, uh, Christian friends, before you make your point, let me jump in here and say uh, what you're talking about here is the formation of sperm. Uh, here, uh, here's an error. Uh, uh, the, the verse says that it is the drop that is emitted from the chest area. It's not referring to the testicle that descends from the abdominal area, not the chest. Here's the problem here, and I want uh, you all to answer this. One of you, one of you, to answer this for me. Uh, by definition, a drop is a small quantity of liquid 
that is separated from a larger body of liquid. Gravity acts upon it, and it drops. That's the term drops. But here's the problem. Here's why we have a contradiction here in the Quran. Drops are not in the human body. They are outside of it. Human blood flowing through the vein is not in drops, neither in, in the uh, cylinder fluid, which is emitted from uh, the, the, the prostate. So the problem, the contradiction here is that uh, drops are not in the human body because gravity acts upon it and it, it, and it drops. So that seminal fluid, it is the, the seminal fluid that carries the sperm from the testicles as it exits the body, as it exits the body, then form drop. So what the Quran verse is talking about is not testicles, but seminal fluid, semi-fluid, or whatever you call it. My wife is a nurse. She knows these things. But anyway, and, and what the Quran is talking about here, or should be talking about here, is is sperm mixture that has left the body during sexual intercourse. It is the drop that the Quran says is formed from between the backbone and the rib. That is obvious, it's obvious a blatant error. That's an error there. And it does say, I'm, I'm looking at the verse. It does say he created, uh, now let man, now let man but think what he is created. He is created from a drop emitted proceeding from between the backbone and the rib. My question to you two, how are you getting drops in the body when drops are not in the body? They're outside of the body. Absolutely. Uh, go ahead. Let me, as far as the drop is concerned. That is obvious. I, I think it's all my turn, right? Far. Yeah. Um, being you know, medical, uh, correct there. Go ahead, Chris, yeah. Chris, Chris, your bike. Okay. Actually, you know, I, 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 if I heard him correctly, he mentioned the name of the book. This is the name of the book he mentioned. I will post the link. You will see that what he said about uh, the explanation of the verse in there, it's not exist. Open the link, and, uh, uh, you know, you can see by yourself. And if we go to the book of Arazi or any, any explanation he wants in Arabic, I can show you that even Arazi is giving us more details, and those details, they are really scary. <laughs> even Arazi, he is saying that the ribs of the, of the, uh, uh, of the women, they are the, the place where as a station for the sperm of the women. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, like, the, the, yeah, the sperm of the women. According to this, you know, uh, uh, the Quran is saying that the women, she have a sperm. You know, this is a sperm. The woman, she don't have a sperm. Who said that women have a sperm anyway? This is a huge mistake. And if there is something is coming from her ribs, what is that thing will create the baby? The womb of the women is down, all the way down. There is no need to say, you know what, from the backbone and the ribs, the backbone of the man and the ribs of the women. If you, if you see in here, the word between, between which means baina, it's not saying from between this location to this location. No, it says between the man backbone and the women ribs. It's not between the backbone of the same body, the same human. There's two humans. There's the man and there is the women. So the Quran is saying to us that gushing fluid is coming from between two parts. The part of the man which is the backbone and the part of the woman which is her ribs. And this is a very, very huge mistake. And as you said, that, you know, the, the testicle of the man, they are out of his body even. And they are not in the back. They are in the front. They are totally in the opposite direction, and they have nothing to do with the backbone. And I'm sure our brother there, he will give me a speech about the new scientist discovery. The science, you know, we go to school. I have degrees. I am not an, someone he is coming from the street and, is, you know, saying to you, I have a, uh, I am, like, all of us, we go to school. I respect you. But, you know, what you are saying to me, it's against even what you are a prophet saying. You can open right now any explanation you want. I have all the explanation of Sunnah, and I'm assuming that you are a Sunni. You can start from Al-Faruz, 
بحر العلوم النقد العيون معالم التنزيل المحرر زيد المسير تفسير القرآن وابن عبد السلام مدارك التنزيل الباب التأويلي بحر المحيط التفسير رائب القرآن الجواهر anyone you want and you will see all of them they agree with me not with you so it's very clear that you are trying to cover a huge mistake in the Quran but I think you fail thank you with all, with all due respect I really appreciate the fact that you went to school and understand English and Mr. the uh, the moderator it, it, it looks like you, you're taking a position in this debate and I would like to correct uh, our uh, the word drop as you explain if you go back to the American dictionary or you go to Webster's Webster's dictionary you will see that the word drop means this and one of them is a very small quantity of liquid it is not telling you coming from inside out or outside in and in the body you can find small quantities of many types of liquid and I will leave my brother Nabil to go through those verses in order to show you where you are wrong that you may learn something new tonight. Hello? Hello? I, I are really you there? Hear. Okay. Yeah, we hear uh, you. Go ahead. I've probably heard the, the, the sentence as well, maybe the statement, in the Quran, you first zero ba'da ul ba'd. So if there is really a, a point, which means in English, that the Quran explains itself with itself. So this means if there is some a verse in which there is a dispute about it and there is a conflict to the Quran in another place where Allah is also talking about the same concept. So here we are in Surah Al-Dahr, which is uh, Surah number 96, and it is uh, Ayah, let's say we start with the first one, uh, saying, Hal ata ala al-insan muhinu min al-96, and it is uh, Ayah, let's say we start with the first one, uh, saying, هل أتى على الإنسان حين من الدهر لم يكن شيئا مذكورا إنا خلقنا الإنسان من نطفة أمشاد من التلي فجعلناه سميعا بصيرا which means has there not been over man a long period of time when he was nothing mentioned verily we created man from a drop of mingled sperm so that's the term drop uh, for the moderator uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an, uh, the usage of the terms and the terminology has to be also used in an honorable manner. So you don't have to talk about really uh, sperm as a sperm. You don't have to talk about sexual intercourse using the term sexual intercourse. But there is a, an inference to the concept and the inference so that you'll understand it. So this is the Qur'an and the context, whatever the Qur'an, the, the, you, you will not find anything in it that somebody may accuse the, uh, that there's some foul language in the Qur'an. So whenever you have right. a misunderstanding of a there. concept, let me finish this, whenever you have a misunderstanding of a concept, then go to another area. And go to another no area. Problem. And then you'll find, no uh, you'll find uh, no. you don't have to go to Baluk and Maram and Okay, I, I want one word from you. Now, this verse is talking about a sperm or a sperm, because what you are saying to me doesn't make sense. The Quran is saying this is a sperm. My own dafiq, which is going to create the baby. Read with me, please, Ibn Kathir. And you will see this is a hadith from your prophet. This is a, 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 a liquid is going to create the baby. He's talking about creating the baby. And your God in the Quran always mentioned that al-ma'u dafiq, this ma'u dafiq is the sperm. This is the sperm, min nutfa, you know, and the women, she don't have a sperm. If you read the description of that liquid, it's a fine texture yellow. So he, divide, you know, he even, he even given us a definition, what kind of liquid we are talking about, where it's coming from. Now let me ask you a question. What is the liquid which is yellow and fine texture is going to create the baby? The egg of the women is not a liquid. There is only one egg. The women have only one egg, not a liquid. Liquid is mean millions of drops. This is what the sperm is. Sper sperm is millions of drops. 
They walk together, they go inside, inside, inside the women when they have intercourse, and one of them is going to activate the egg. One of the sperm, one of those drop of the sperm, millions of them will go inside, but one of them only will activate the egg, and there is only one egg for the women. There's no liquid of eggs, only one egg. And you, God, in the Quran, insist, saying, we created you from a drop, which is a sperm. You know, this is why, <coughs> sorry, I'm losing my voice. This is why you are refusing to read all the explanation I'm mentioning to you, because simply all of them, they agree with me. Isn't it funny that always we say to Muslims, you know, let us put the first seat. So you know what? You cannot explain the Quran up to your mind. You have to go by the explanation of the scholars. When we give them the scholars, they say we don't go by scholars. It's very, you know, it's very weird. Are you going to take your scholars or not? Your mic. Let me, let me ask a question before, before you all give a response. Uh, and then I'm going to, uh, we're going to have 10 minutes, four, 10 minutes to go. And uh, those who want to call in, if you have uh, questions for either side, now is the time to call in if you have a question at 347-326. 9268. If you do have a question, we want you to, uh, to call in uh, with that question. And uh, we'll, we'll try to take them as quickly as possible. Uh, there again, I, I do want to uh, ask the Muslim, uh, Muslim uh, uh, representatives the question. The Quran states that man is formed from the drop that is uh, emitted from between the backbone and the ribs. Is that a true statement? Yes, a true statement, as you have read in the Quran, and that you can see the reference of what's known as somatogenesis. And really, I didn't want to go through what is a somite and how somites are formed and how the uh, testicles are formed okay, but here's uh, with point. kidney and all of it, and then the distance yeah, okay, of fine. the dead mm -hmm. testicles that's fine. We won't have a point go through all the development. No, right. We can go through this explanation, you know, with no problem to us. You to admit. But I don't think you have, I don't know if you have uh, uh, that scientific knowledge or Mr. Prince has that scientific knowledge. Actually, it's very, very detailed. Uh, and again, like I said, uh, it's not only one verse, if one verse is giving some confusion for some people. Well, I just wanted to... One moment, one moment, please. Yeah. I just wanted you to admit, I just want you to admit and agree with me to the listening audience, because everybody is listening to what's been said. You just agreed and affirmed uh, where the Quran states that man is formed from the drop that is emitted from between the backbone and the ribs. I stated to you, I stated earlier to you that uh, drops uh, are not in the human body. They're outside of it. So even if uh, that was the case, you still wouldn't have drops in the body. The drops, first and second of all, the reason that's a contradiction or that's an error, and uh, the drops, this is a little medical uh, terminology here, but the drops, the liquid, is not formed in embryonic development and does not begin uh, that development until the testicle begins to mature. And that occurs after the birth of the baby and after the testicles have descended out of the body. Out of the body. So therefore, the Quran is incorrect in its statement that a person is formed from a drop that is emitted from between the backbone and the body. That's incorrect. And I bet to that difference um, uh, sir, because you are not reading the Quran, you are reading your mind. And I'm going to tell you this verse clearly as he read it earlier. Inna khalaqal insana min nutfatin amshaj. Allah says min nutfatin amshajin. Amshajin. That means a drop of mingled sperm. Now since our beloved brother uh, want to always refer back to what the scholar says. This is what the scholar says about this verse. As you may read with me, um, or you may listen and, and hear well. It says, I'm charging mingled with the female ovum 
has to be fertilized with the male sperm before a new animal, he refers to man as animal meaning a being, can be born. So therefore, the drop you were talking about, and I just corrected you, the word drop in English does not mean something coming outside all the time. It means a little uh, or volume of a liquid, wherever it may be in the human body, can be called a drop. And that is your American English telling you the meaning of drop. So why do you want to grasp? on the word of drop as if you are dropping water from the bottle. This is how you look at it. But remember, this is your own interpretation, but the Quran no, does not, not mean it's what not you are saying. It's our own interpretation. Okay. Okay, listen. So that is you right. Know, first, right. I want you, I want you. And it's wrong. Go ahead, Christopher. I, I want you. He, he is the one. I respect your point. We're going to take some phone calls. Yeah, they hold it you know, he, he is the one who mentioned chapter 76, verse number 2. This is Ibn Kathir in the front of me. It says the water of the man and the water of the, the women. The women, she don't have a water, sir. The egg is not a water. And when the, your God, Allah, make say the water of the man and the water of the women. Read Ibn Kathir with me. I'm posting the link. This is not my explanation. Don't tell me your English. I am an, an, an Arabic-speaking man. This is my native language. I grow all my life in the Middle East. It says, this, this is Ibn Kathir saying, Amshaj akhlaatun wal masjid wal masjid wal masjid wal shayi wal shayi wal shayi which means it's mixed together. Qala Ibn Abbas, fi qawlihi ta'ala min nutfatin amshaj ya'ni ma ar-rajul wa ma'u al-mar'a. Let me continue, please. You know, so it is the, the, the water of the women and the water of the man. It is equal water. What is equal to the water of the man? It is the water of the women. It is the, the, the water of the women and the water of the man. It is equal water. What is equal to the water of the man? It is the water so of the women. Mean, what do you mean ma means water or liquid? Listen, listen. Ma, ma according to the Quran. Oh, okay, what? Well, listen, listen, please listen. What is the water of the man? It is a sperm. Do you, do you, do you, don't you agree? The, the water but of the man is a sperm. you can drink and you call it water? Can you drink? drink? Well, Come you on. Like and here we are not talking about nobody is going to drink a sperm, man. We're talking about why creating a baby. So why do you wanna why do you wanna focus on the word water instead of understanding the meaning this is, that you want to make over here? Okay, listen, this is the word. This is what it says that me. Do you want to exchange the word for you? If I change it, you will say, you see, you are changing the word. The word water of the man, it's what? It is his milk or his sperm? Come on. And read the explanation. You are, you, you are <laughs> you are the one who, you know, the fluid, it's the water of the man, it's equal water. Water of the man, water of the woman. What is the water of the man? Simply the sperm. And actually the Quran mentioned many places saying, not fa, saying the word clearly, clearly. Not fa, not fa, which is a sperm, not only water. So in here it's mentioned as water, in many other places it's mentioned as a not fa. And now, what is the water of the women? This is the question. It's going to create a baby. The women, she don't have a water, will create a baby. The egg is not a, you know, it's not a water. It is one egg, not millions. She is not a chicken. Actually, even chicken have one. She is not a fish. She have one egg, and the man has a sperm. The sperm, there are water. It is millions of sperm. They go, and they go, and they do that. And, you know, I want him even, I want him, look, look for how long I'm asking him to, to read Ibn Kathir. He rejects, he don't want to read, because Ibn Kathir is saying even that it's coming from the chest, you know. He don't want to read the scholars. And the, he is going, you know, is, is it funny that he is going to mention to us an, uh, uh, the American science, but he don't want to read his own scholars' explanation. He don't want to read his own verse, but he want to go and say, oh, right, it's right. Safe. you don't understand. Great, great, wonderful, wonderful. Since you want, you, you really like the term water, let us talk to you in this way. Now, when you open the egg, if you have the chance, or would you tell me what is in the egg of the woman? Is it a liquid, Ooh. a fluid, or what is it? Guys, let me jump in here. Hold up, hold up, let me jump in here. Uh, and, just wait, just wait, please. Just wait, please. 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 Please.
Um, you know, he, he, just wait, just wait. Please, just wait. You know, he just phone wait. call. Uh, that we need to take these calls real quick here uh, <laughs> and let them come in and say uh, what they have to say. Uh, we're going to open up the phone lines now and let the caller, uh, 602, uh, you can address your question to either Christian Prince, uh, Christian uh, um, representative, a Christian scholar, <laughs> or you can address your question 602. Once 602 is done with his question, we'll go to 302, and then we'll go to 442, 973, and 360. We're going to take the call in order. Uh, if you have if you have noise in the background, please take your noise out because I would not be I would not be able to uh, I would not be able to uh, do anything after that point. Uh, the, the switchboard would be off. So uh, six zero two, go ahead. Yes. Uh, is this me? Can I ask my question? Yeah, go ahead. Question 602. Okay, uh, uh, I hope you guys don't mind me uh, changing the subject uh, for a second. Uh, my question goes out to, I guess uh, both can, can uh, I'd like to get an answer from uh, both sides. Uh, uh, my question is pretty uh, easy. Um, I'd like to know how many uh, days uh, it took Allah in the Quran to create the heavens and the earth. Because there's two different contradictions. Uh, maybe a Christian prince knows of it, I'm sure. And uh, there goes my question, and uh, this is Son of Abe, by the way. Okay. Well, I will, uh, you know, first there's, there's two chapters in the Quran. One is saying that, uh, it, you know, it took Allah. Uh, uh, six days, and other verse taken it, uh, took Allah uh, eight days. Uh, but before I give the mic back to, uh, and you know, if you want, we can give the reference. We can show those those uh, those uh, uh, reference. But I would like people to concentrate on our topic, the one we are talking about, so we can finish it before we go to the topic. And I promise you, after we finish this one, we will go to the topic, which is, uh, you know, how many days Allah. Uh, created the earth seven, six or, but in here I want uh, I want the brother uh, 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 our host to remember what our guest he said that he agreed that the fluid of the man is the egg, and now let us ask ourselves very easy question as long as he agreed that this is the water of the egg inside the egg is the egg of the woman coming from her ribs, you know, come on. And what, what the water inside the egg has to do, and the, by the way, the water inside the egg, I never heard of the water inside the egg. But, you know, if we, if we say that this is a water, is that gushing of flowed water? Is that coming from her red? You know, the Muslims, they will do whatever, just part the truth. This is how always they do it, and this is why they do not agree right now with their scholars, because their scholars is the one who's going to show the truth. But suddenly, there are scholars, they knew nothing, but someone, he do not know anything about Islam. He is, are you equal to Ibn Kathir? He would say, today he is equal to Ibn Kathir, today he is better. But if you ask him in the mosque, he would say, A'udhu Billah, I am not equal to Ibn Kathir. He know a lot better than me. Are you equal to uh, Ibn Taymiyyah? Are you equal to Al-Razi, Al the, the, the scientist Al-Razi? He will say, uh, today he is better than Al-Razi. But, when he go to the mosque, he will say, I'm not equal to Arazi. You know, so what we are seeing here, that somebody who doesn't want to confess and say, What's the question? You know, what? what the question? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's well, the question? Somebody, <laughs> somebody forgot the question, huh? Okay, the question is, somebody asked you, said, how many days Allah took him to create the, the earth? Yeah, how many days point. Allah... Yeah, take, take the mic, please. You can answer. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, when He says talks about days, He talks about days in a different concept than you and I would understand. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala talks about the day of judgment. Is that one day, as in 24 hours? Is this one day, as in on the Vulcan uh, calendar? 
is this one day on the lunar calendar? It's whatever Allah's day has decreed for it to be. So whether Allah says six days, or whether Allah says eight days, whether Allah says four days, whether Allah says two days, the knowledge of these days is only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not with me, and it's not with you, and it's not with any uh, person who's uh, following the solar system, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not, is not bounded by the solar system. So if it's mentioned in one place six days, and it's mentioned in another place eight days, we still don't know that these days are 50,000 years, or one day is 1,000 years. We don't know. This is, uh, as Muslims and everybody will say, Ibn Kathir will tell you this, Raji will tell you this, Ibn Taymiyyah will tell you this, that this knowledge, the knowledge of human being is only limited by the information that's present at that time. So when Allah talks about days, it I does not mean the here. same days that okay. you and I understand them. Okay. But this, this, is this is another question, actually. This is another question. A second, please. A second. A second, please. You know, what, what, you know, the question is, how many days Allah, He said He created the earth and the sky? We are not asking how long or those days. If Allah, He said, six days in this chapter, and He says, eight days in that chapter, this is a contradiction. Because those are days for Allah. We are not asking Allah right now how long, how short they are. Either they are six, either they are eight. This is a very clear contradiction. And regarding how long is the day, you will see in the Quran, one verse thing, uh, that you are, you are mentioning the last day, the judgment day. But the Quran says to us one day for Allah, the normal day, how long it is. It says, you did It is 1,000 year in our time equal to one day for Allah. This is the regular day. The day of the judgment, according to you, is the one is going to be 50,000 year. So, we are not questioning now how long, how short it is. This is not the question. The question, one chapter saying six days, one chapter saying eight days, and this is a very clear contradiction. Because days for Allah is equal, is the same. Those, those are the days of Allah. We are not, and isn't it funny always when the Muslims we say to them something, it's very clear, it's contradiction, they say, only Allah knows. So how you are a Muslim? You do not know anything. So why are Allah is telling you even the days, if nobody will know anyway? What's the idea? Go ahead, sir. Well, we are Muslim by the grace of Allah. That's why we are Muslims. And uh, again, the answer is still in the... The idea. Go ahead, sir. Well, we are Muslim by the grace of Allah, that's why we are Muslims. And uh, again, the answer is still in the pudding. And that is uh, that whenever Allah talks about days, just like you mentioned, that there are some days that are 1,000 years, there are some other days that are 50,000 years, and there are some other days that Allah does not mention how, how, how long they are. Let me ask you a question. Let me and ask you and then there's here. the day of judgment, let me say, there is a day of judgment well, talk about Yawma to Bethan is Sama Ubayri Sama, which okay. means that the whole order of this universe that we have is going to change. So well, that, let, me, let me ask you a question. Cannot, we cannot limit these days. We let cannot tell you about these days. Alhamdulillah, yeah. I mean, we humbly say that. Okay, let me ask you a question. Can you hear me? Yes, you hear me. Okay, let me ask you a question. Uh, since we talked about days here, we're going to go to the next call. Uh, the, the Quran says the Bible is, is not uh, corrupt. Will you agree? Say it again. The Quran says the Bible uh, is not corrupt. It's not corrupt? Yeah, the Quran says the Bible is not corrupt. Are you quoting the Quran or are you asking a question? Yeah, I'm, I'm saying to you, the Quran says the Bible is not corrupt. Tell me the verse. Tell me exactly where Allah says in the Quran that the Bible is not corrupt or corrupt. Tell me. Okay. Uh, the, the Bible, the, the Quran says that the Book of Moses, the Psalms, and the Gospels were all given by God in Surah 287, also in 4163, and also in Surah 33 and 546. It says about the Torah in 287. We gave Moses the book and followed 
following him up with a succession of messengers. So the Quran says that the book of Moses are not corrupt. My point is this, in Genesis chapter 1, it tells us that in six literal solar days, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, if, if you're saying that one day could mean 10,000 years or 5,000 years, then we have a clear contradiction. The Quran is contradicting what the Bible says. Because the Bible makes it very clear that the evening and the morning were the first day. It didn't say anything about 1,000 years, 10,000 years. But if the Quran says that the, if the Quran says that the book of Moses uh, and the Psalms and the Gospel were all given by God, and the Quran says some contradiction to that about creation, the creation account, then we have uh, a conflict of interest here. We have a contradiction somewhere here. Either, um, either we go oh, with the, the Genesis account of creation that gives a six solar day, literal days of creation, 24 hour day, and by the session of evening and morning, or we go by what the Quran says. Actually, actually, right. brother, just let me let me let okay. me give you a hadith. Excuse me, let's, 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 excuse me for the fact. Hadith. If we may answer to what and then we're going to go to the next call. We're going to, have to take the next call too. Uh, yeah, just to help you, just, just to help you in the answer. This is Al Qurtubi saying it clearly. This is your scholar. One day for Allah is equal to one thousand. Six days equal to six thousand. I will post the link for them so they can open and read. This is Al Qurtubi explanation. Chapter 7, for chapter 7, verse number 54. So, if your scholar is saying this, agreeing with us, I don't know why you are rejecting your scholars. It sounds like you are creating a new religion. Your scholars suddenly, they know nothing about Islam, but you know more than them. This is the link. I want everybody to open it and read it. So, how come, as we see now, the scholars of Islam agree with us, but they don't agree with the Muslims? Like, one of you have to be wrong. This is mean that you are a scholar, and all the scholars of Islam from today, they knew nothing. Thank you. Uh, and once Let's again, take next call. Let's take the next caller. Next caller had a question, too. We're going to go down the line and take the calls. Uh, uh, the next caller. Go ahead, next caller. I can't see my switchboard, so uh, don't everybody go at the same time. Comment. I think you can hear me. I know you're online. Comment, do you have a question for either side? Go ahead. Okay. If not, then the next next caller can go ahead with your question. Um, hello, it's my turn? Yes, go ahead. Okay, I just want to ask a good question about Allah. What is Allah? Allah is it like a human being or is it not like a human being? Is he got spirit in it or is it not spirit? You know, could you please explain on it? Can I repeat my question or? No, we can repeat your question. question. Is Allah a human being or not? Is that your, your question? No, no. He's saying he's a spirit or not a spirit. What he is. He's a spirit yeah. or not a spirit. This is the question. He is a spirit. He has a spirit. He has a spirit. He's the same God, right? No, we don't have the same God. Your God is not our God, sir. Your God, according to the Quran, he has no spirit. He is not a spirit. And he has a leg. And actually, all what we see in the God of Islam, if we go to Surah Al-Qalam, we will see nothing except a leg. He has hands. He has eyes. But all of them, they are attached to his leg. And he is not a spirit. And he has no spirit. So, your God, Allah, cannot be our God. Because our God is a spirit, your God is not. Your God is a leg. And honestly, none of us is going to worship a leg. And if you want me to show you a clear explanation from your prophet that your God, Allah, in the judgment day, show himself as a leg, I will be happy to show you that. Let me give you the hadith. But again, you again the hadith. according to Prince, with all respect to him, with all his knowledge about Islam, He's saying that our Lord, our Allah, our Creator, the Creator of the heaven and the earth, the one who Jesus said, according to the biblical, Ilahi, Ilahi, Lima Sabachthani, my Lord, my Lord, then he has reduced them to a leg. Well, thank you, but we humbly disagree with you on this, 
And Allah, whether you like it or you don't, he, my Allah and your Allah is the one who created you. He's the one who created the whole earth and whatever is on it. And what is Allah? We don't know what is Allah. Is it his spirit? Does he, whatever he says about himself, whether he has an eye, he has an eye that fits his glory. And, and uh, um, thank you very much for raising this. I think you have a leg, don't you? Well, uh, but according, so, according to Muslims, according to Muslims... Excuse, okay. excuse me and let me just finish. And if you, you believe you, me. you have a leg, <laughs> I believe also the dog has a leg. So are you equal to a dog? No. But you still believe you are a human being. Now you have an eye. And of course, the snake has an eye. Are you a snake? You are not a snake, you are a human being. Therefore, the attributes of God as his attributes can never, ever be compared to any other attribute of that which he has created and brought into existence. And I will defeat anybody who can prove from the Quran that God is a leg. Get me the verse right now and I'm going to read it let to me, the audience as they may follow the word. Okay, let me let me uh, prove that to him. Uh, let me whole, prove that to him. Let me ask you a question. Are you saying that God is uh, is not spirit? Okay, well, you as a human being, do you have I a spirit? Hold on, Mr. Moderator. No, you know when you teach sometimes, it is very good to take example from the person right in front of you because that's what they I, may I understand. What you said? Not cutting you off. But I understand what you're saying about human being. I'm not so asking you a question not directed towards human being. My question is, are you saying that God is not spirit? My question to you, as an answer to your question, is you as a human being, do you have spirit? What does that have to do with me being God? I'm of not course, God. Because you are a product. Uh, coming from the creation, from as a creature of God, then we may understand God better. My, and if you answer to that question, I'll give you a direct answer to your question. My, my, my point is, if God is not spirit, when the Bible said God is spirit, then uh, my question to you is, will be, if, if the Quran said God is not spirit, then what is God? God is a spirit and a physical being at the same time. And now, that's why, hold on, hold on, Mr. Moderator now, you have to listen when you ask a question. This is why I was referring back to you as a human being thinking, asking you, what are you? Let me be clear on this. Let me get, you stated that God is, is spirit and physical quality, right? Uh, God has a physical being. But his physical being, his attributes are mentioned in the Quran. But he has nothing to do with what he has created as far as comparison is concerned. You can't compare him to what he has created. He is nothing like what he has created. Do with what he has created as far as comparison is concerned. You can't compare him to what he has created. He is nothing like what he has created. Therefore, All right, let me, let me, let me ask you something saying? here. Because we, we, we get it somewhere. Okay. If God, first of all, if God is uh, pure existence, mm -hmm. uh, pure simplicity, meaning that uh, he has no potentiality at all, no possibility to not exist or to be anything other than what he is, pure existence and simple. Now, if God had any, if there was any physicality to God, then he would be undergoing change. Why is that? You, you follow my point? No, no. But if you say God is pure existence, a pure actuality, he has no potential of any kind. Mm -hmm. You see, I can prove what you're saying using your Bible, but that's not the topic today. Now, anything, it is not 
demonstrated, not scientifically or physically, that anything that exists will have to go through changes. No. And you cannot prove that anything that exists will have to go through changes. That's one thing. And now you and I, as beings that are not perfect at all, of course, a perfect being as God would not be seen to us as I look at you or look at myself or anybody else. Okay. Because he can is my perfect. That's yes. why he is... Hold on, excuse me, please. Can, can I have my time? No, we, we, we got your point. We got no, your you point. don't get it yet. You don't get it no, yet. We get it. You, you are saying... Now. Please, please. You are speaking for five minutes. I did not speak. I'm, I'm waiting. You don't you know? get my point no. yet. Let me finish. Okay. No, we got your point. We got your point. You you you're my turn. You're my turn. Okay, go ahead. Listen. He is okay, saying that right. Allah, he has a physical body. He is saying Allah, he has a physical body, but his body I'm is not, not like you. Body. I did not say yeah. body, sir. What, what is that then? You said being, physical. Being. What is physical? Physical liquid? I said, I said being, not body. Okay, listen. When, when you're a prophet, he said Allah will show his leg. You just said you have a leg. The dog has a leg. Is that, is that mean you are a, do a dog? You agree that Allah, he has a leg. That leg is physical or it is a liquid. I want you to open, please, this hadith with me and read. Your prophet there is speaking. This is the book 93, Hadith al-Bukhari, verse number 5, uh, sorry, hadith number 532S. Read it. You will see your prophet describing things. You will be able to see Allah. They said, how we will see Allah? He said, the same as you see the moon and the, the, the sun in the sky. When it's clear, this is how easy. And they said, what we will see in him? What is the sign? He said, you will see his leg. He will show his leg. So Allah, he has a leg, and this leg has to be something physical. And you just agree, agree, agreed that Allah is physical being. Physical being. And the Quran said that, that Allah, he is going to show his leg. Now if I ask you, Allah, he has a hand, he has a leg, he has an eye. You will say to me, okay, he has a body, but his body is not like yours. His leg, and this is what you were trying to say to me a second ago, when you said, okay, you know what, the dog, he has a leg. Are you a dog? You know, so you are comparing your God to us, trying to prove to us that the leg of Allah is not the same as the leg of us. This is not the problem. Your That's God, Allah, He has nothing except a leg. He is a leg. If I ask you, do Allah have a neck? You will say no. Do Allah have a chest? You will say no. With my respect to you, I'm a fine insult. Do Allah have a waist or a butt? You will say no. So what is left? He is a leg. There is nothing left out of this God except a leg, half two hands, and five fingers. And you will see in Sahih al-Bukhari, your prophet saying that Allah will carry the earth in the top of his five fingers. So he has a physical fingers. He has a real leg. And if you, you know, uh, I want you to remember that this, this, record, this, this show is recorded and all the Muslims, they are going to listen to you again. When you say that Allah, he don't have a physical body, Muslims will come to you and say, from where you got that? Do you have a proof? I am asking you right now for the proof. I am showing my proof, which is Sahih al-Bukhari, from your prophet, saying that your God, Allah, has a physical body for real and it is a leg. They ask him, are we going to see God? He did not say you will see him, a part of him. He said you will see Allah. How? He will show his leg. So okay, what is Allah? I'm going Allah? to read the hadith for you, and I'm sorry. The hadith is saying, Antum satarawna rabbakum yawm al-qiyamati kama tarawna al-qamara laylat al-badari. That's the hadith you were referring to. We know it very well. Now, God has a leg. God has hands. God okay, has fingers. Hold on, sir. You have to listen now if you want to listen. No, 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 listen, listen. Yeah, just, just this way. Read the hadith after. Sorry, I, I mentioned by mistake this hadith. This is hadith number 532C, not S. C. I know the hadith you were referring. That's why you have okay, to read that one, please. You don't get okay, read that one, please. Listen to me. Okay. You have to listen. Okay. We believe okay, that God all these that he has mentioned in the Quran, or Prophet Muhammad peace be has mentioned in the hadith, authentic hadith, those attributes are true, and we believe in them as they are, as it is mentioned by Allah and his messenger. Now, I ask you yourself earlier, to show you that I'm not comparing God with you, I said to you that you have a leg and a dog is a leg. But you cannot compare yourself with a dog. That's what I'm saying. 
Now, do not put words in my mouth. I did not say God has a body. I say a physical being. Because you and I have, have not seen God yet. And inshallah, we will see him yawm al qiyamati. As the Prophet said, inshallah. Now, you just listen we'll now see. and let me conclude inshallah right. for this question. Now, Good. for for what you mentioned, it is true that those attributes are attributes of God. But if you are taking those references, why can't you take the other reference that says, Laysa kamithlihi shayun wa huwa sami wal basir. Allah, I just, I just told you. Is, hold, hold on, you have to hold on now and listen. <laughs> Allah, there is nothing like him as he is all hearing and all seeing. You, if you ask us... One moment, let me jump in here. I can't point. Let me let me jump here and say so because I, I think I think that you, you're trying uh, uh, you're trying to have it both ways. Uh, Islam is trying to have it both ways. First of all, you say that God is absolutely simplicity. It's correct. That's, that's your word. That's that's your words, sir, not my words. Okay, but let me make let me say let me say this here. God is absolutely simple. God is simplicity. In other words, when I say that God is absolutely simple, a God is simplicity. I'm saying to you that simple means without parts. That's what I'm saying. Simple means without parts. So what has parts can come apart. So if you right. say that God part. has parts, then what has parts can come up, come apart. Simple means indivisible. God is not capable of being divided. There are no things in God. There is no place in which the fabric of his being can be torn or come undone. God's simplicity means that he is absolutely one. Not only does he have unity, but he is absolute unity. You see? You know, so therefore, you, know, you cannot contribute part to God. Now, great. And I, I, I want to be for, for the people, for me, people me, listening, me, and I'm, and I'm sorry, me, dear please. brother, just for people Jamal. listening, you said you used the word simple and simplicity and whatever word you use. It did not come out of our mouth. We said that God no, I'm just is... My, I'm just making my case. Okay, I'm one just using one terminology. One so now, Mr. Everybody moderator, just being can understand. I'm Mr. Just moderator, you mentioned the fact that uh, a God is not capable of being divided, and God does not consist of parts. That God is yes. pure existence, pure actuality. I'm saying to you, he has no, God has no potentiality. I'm saying to you that God is perfect. Now, if you know, something is perfect, or one is perfect, and you said absolute, the word absolute means a lot. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, The leg of Allah, just a second, please. The leg of Allah, he's saying to us, the leg of I, I Allah think, is perfect. I think at least, the leg, at least I should finish my point before no, you take the floor. You're not taking your time more than me. Actually, he's giving you time more than you. Not, more than you me. Don't you know? have I'm the one who has answers. That's why I should take my time. Just, just wait. You know, I want you to read the hadith I gave you after this one because this one will explain. This is your prophet himself. I, I, you know, I understand that you show respect to your prophet. So let us go and see what your prophet is saying. Whatever your prophet is saying, he is right. Or what you are saying to us, Allah, he has a leg, but his leg is not like yours. Allah is not like anyone. I'm not asking you if he like me or not. The leg is a leg. Why Allah, he call it a leg? Simply because it's a leg, which means he walk. You know, a leg, you know, why he did not say a wing? Why he did not say an eye? Why he did not say a nose? He is the one who named that part. He gave you after this one because this one will explain. This is your prophet himself. I, I, you know, I understand that you show respect to your prophet. So let us go and see what your prophet is saying. Whatever your prophet is saying, he is right. Or what you are saying to us, Allah, he has a leg, but his leg is not like yours. Allah is not like anyone. I'm not asking you if he like me or not. The leg is a leg. Why Allah, he call it a leg? Simply because it's a leg, which means he walk. 
you know, a leg, you know, why he did not say a wing, why he did not say an eye, why he did not say a nose. He is the one who named that part. He is the one who gave it a name and a title, not me. So you don't come after me saying to me, oh, you cannot use it as a leg as you think. Well, he is the one who used it, not me. He called it a leg, it means it's a leg. So you Muslims to run from what your God is saying, you have to pay around the world, say, oh, you know what, it's not like a leg like yours, I don't care. This is not the question. Maybe it's a beautiful leg, maybe it's the most amazing leg, but it is a leg. Who name it a leg? It's your God. Who explain it as a leg? It's your prophet. And it's not up to you to say, well, this leg is different. No problem. I'm not saying my leg is the same. Well, my leg have a lot of hair. This is not the question. <laughs> I'm not comparing myself to your God, Allah, sir. I am Thank not you. saying... Thank you. You, Thank you. Yeah. But I think, I think you, 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 you want to focus on words and play with words. And that's not how we approach, you know, when it comes to reading the words of God. That's not how we approach things. Unfortunately, we do not play with words. <coughs> you want to prove to me that my Lord, who is your creator and your protector, your sustainer, your provider... You he is want not my Lord. to reduce him. Okay, you want to reduce him to a leg and want to focus on the word leg. Now, it's not me. It's this, time ask, and this time I'm not. This time I'm not referring to God. But <laughs> can I, uh, is, is there any leg that has an eye or hands or fingers? No. Well, this is why. Allah, is not this is why, No, no, no. This can, is, please, no, no, listen. Yes, this is why let Allah. Let this is why Allah is not like no, any no, leg. Yeah. Let me this finish is why because I think you said earlier that you went to school and part of what you learn in school is to, to learn how to listen. And I want to Arabic take my school, anyway. before it's you... Arabic before school. You, an Arabic school ahead. can teach us that. Now, okay, listen. wonderful, great. Now, I'm saying you want to reduce him to that, but you are not quoting the Quran, saying the Quran reduced him to a leg. That's what I'm saying. And what I told you and Mr. the moderator earlier is that God is a being with attributes far from looking like his creature's attributes. He is the absolute being and the beginning of everything. So why do you want to go ahead and give an image to him like what you have as you have not seen him and still cannot sense the being of God as a perfect and absolute being? Now let us be Great. frank and let, let us be answer. also open as intellectuals in order to debate this clearly. What I want you to do is, if you cannot compare yourself with a dog or a monkey, why do you want to reduce God as a perfect being to a leg, as he mentioned in the Quran or in the Hadith, that he has a leg or an eye or a hand or fingers? Why do you want to do to God what you do not accept to, to yourself as he is perfect and you are not perfect? Let, now, let, let me us use answer. our let common sense you. and debate this. Okay, let me answer you. First, I am not the one who compared myself to anyone. It's your God. When he named his, his leg as a leg, he did, he did put himself in a title, not me. I am not the one who named his part as a leg. It was him. Ask your God why he called it a leg if it's not a leg. So it's a leg, but it's not a leg. But this leg doesn't look like a, like a leg. But this leg is different from your leg, but it's a leg. But so you are playing with the word. And you are saying, can you compare your, your leg with a dog? Yes, you can. You can say this is a leg of a human, this is a leg of a dog. This is a short leg, hairy, it looked like a leg of a dog. This is a leg of a human. We can compare, who said we cannot? We can compare as long both as they are legs. It doesn't make me really a dog, it doesn't make him a human, but both are legs and we can compare. We can count how many bones they have, they can, we can make a study, and this is how we can make a study. This is a leg of a human, this is a leg of a dog. You think you can, you, you know, are, you are insulting by saying, you are oh, you are going to Let me jump in. Let me jump in. I think you are an Arab and you know what Let's take one another call. Call. means in Arabic. Uh, let me jump in. Let's take another call real quick to what that question is, uh, Go ahead, caller. The next caller, go ahead. Is that me? Yes, you. Go ahead. Okay. I have a question for the Muslims. You said that there was no um, no science known in that time about embryology. Well, actually, there was a Greek doctor in 150 A.D. with the last name of Galen, I believe, 
that had a theory much similar, if not almost identical, to Muhammad's. But I would also like to read you something out of the Bible, which is in the book of Job, which is over probably a thousand years older than Muhammad, um, that it does talk about embryology, if you want to play with words like you guys like to do. Has thou not poured me out as milk and curdled me like cheese? Has thou has clothed me with skin and flesh and has fenced me with bones and sinews? So, and actually in the Quran, if you read the part about the bones, it says the bones comes first and then the flesh does, but the Bible actually gets it right by saying the flesh and the skin comes first. And I'm going to hang up and let you guys answer because my phone's almost dead. Is that all right? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you. Yes, uh, thank you. First of all, in order to answer to your question, I'm not saying that embryology was not there when the Quran was... I'm saying science was not developed enough in order to explain things as they explain it today. And this is why the scientists, most of them, they refer to the Quran mainly to those verses talking about how a human being is created in order to say, yes, in the 7th century, the answer was there, but science was not as developed as to bring the explanation to that which was mentioned in the Quran. And that also is a miracle to show that Quran came not for a particular time only, not for a particular group of hum- human beings, not also for particular circumstances, but for all mankind, all times until the end of time. While, and I'm not going to jump in other books, but I'm just talking about the Quran. And today in science, they have done so far, mainly in the chapter Al-Mu'minun, the believer, in the very first uh, 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 verses, when Allah describes the sequences of human development or the embryo, then you can see that science could not, of course, uh, answer to all those questions at the time of Prophet Muhammad peace him. And Jesus was there 563 years before Muhammad, peace be upon him. Therefore, even if the Bible mentioned it, I'm saying to you that the, the knowledge was in the scriptures, but science was not developed enough in order to explain that knowledge which existed in the scriptures, if I may let answer your question. question. Okay, let, let me make my part, please. Let me make my part. Just a second, please. First, the, the words he mentioned... Is, he, quote, he said science. You know, I Muslims, they have all the... All the quote. Okay. For, for sure, they are American science. Trust me. They will make, give you any name you want. But no, this is not the question. Chapter 76, uh, uh, sorry, the chapter he mentioned about uh, 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 the Nutfa, uh, it says clearly that Allah, he created the human being from a clot, and that the clot became the baby. Clot don't grow. Clot, they are dead blood, and they will never grow. This is chapter 23, verse number 14. It says, ثُمَّ خَلَقْنَا النُّطْفَ عَلَقَ فَخَلَقْنَا الْعَلَقَ مُضْغَ فَخَلَقْنَا الْمُضْغَ عَظْمًا فَكَسَوْنَا الْعِظَامَ لَحْمًا And you know, it's very funny that the Muslims right away, they will give you, scholars said, scholars agreed. Scholars, you know what, this is something you can learn in sixth grade school. You do not need to be a scholar. You do not need to be a doctor. A clot will never become a baby. And the bones don't come first and then the flesh. And the, the sperm will never become a clot anyway, because the sperm, when he... Hello? Hello? Seems like we lost Christian Prince. Are you there? He's not there anymore, but probably his radio is on, and he may hear what I'm going to say. And I'm going to read the yes, verses. Let, let, let's find to. out. Is anybody else on? Is anybody else on? We're still on anyway. I still hear. Uh, I know uh, my guest is on. Uh, can, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you all. Okay, great. I, uh, let me ask, do I, do I have another caller? My switchboard has went out. Uh, is there another caller with another question? Okay. I, I think we might have lost connection. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> but you're still recording. They may hear this later. 
I don't know what happened here. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. I think I think we lost the connection. I think I lost Christian Prince. Hey, I I think we might have lost connection. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> but you still recording? Let me hear this later. I don't know what happened here. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. I think I think we lost the connection. I think I lost Christian Prince. Let's try him again because I want him to hear this. Okay, hold 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 tight here. Do we have any more callers on the line holding? I want to make sure. It's just not Christopher Prince. Okay. Uh, I don't know what happened there. I think like I lost Christian Prince. Uh, guys, a great segment. Uh, it was a good discussion on, on, on both sides. Um, I'm going to try to get them back in. <laughs> uh, well, I, I really wanted him to hear these verses as he started mentioning these verses, but he really don't get the meaning. And if he was still recording, probably he would go back and listen to this broadcasting again in order to see the answer to the question. Okay. Uh, let me see, can I get Prince? Then you let me know if I if I may go ahead, okay? Okay. Let me type a message. I'm going to have to put him on conference call. Okay. Uh, Okay. Where you at, Bubba? Hello? Hello? Moderator? Hello? Okay, hold on, guys. I'm going to have to make a... I'm going to have to make a... Okay, but uh, pay attention also to the time. It's, it's past, the two hours past 11 minutes now, and uh, if we could just make this point and then probably call it a day. Okay. okay? Right, let's see here. One moment here. Mr. Prince, are you there? Hmm? Yeah, I think you're back. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, you're back. Can you here? Can you okay, hear Christian Prince? Okay, sorry, guys. I, I lost uh, my, 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 my phone hung up, and I could not call again, so I'm using a different phone now. Anyway, so I was it's, saying... It's all right. I was, um, it's, I was, uh, I was saying... Let me finish what I was saying, you know, just to finish. You know, you know the, 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 the prophet of Islam and the scholars of Islam explain, and they say to us clearly, that Allah, he has a physical body. 
and all what you are saying to us, you are trying not to say, yes, he do. We can prove and we can show. And actually, I am posting the hadith in front of everybody, so everybody can go and see it by himself. It says clearly that Allah will show his leg. All what you are saying to us, the leg of no, Allah... No, you're missing the point. That's not, that's not where we were, sir. We already discussed that. We were talking about the creation, and we were trying to answer to the question of that caller. Right, right, so right. So you just, you just stepping back. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, okay. Uh, 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 you know, okay, you know, the, 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 the Quran says that Allah created the from the sperm, the sperm will turn to be a clot. If you open with me chapter 23, the verse number 14, the one you mentioned, not me, you are the one who chose that one, not me. This is, I, I will, I will pause to make a clear explanation, and I will pause the translation made by Muslims for Muslims, and you will see that it says clearly that the sperm itself turned to be a clot, and this is very wrong. Number one, the sperm never turned to be anything. The sperm, after activation, the egg, it dies. It doesn't stay alive. And according to the verse, you are, you know, you are talking to us, or you are mentioning to us, you are saying that this sperm will turn to a clot. Let me, let me, make, let me pause the verse, and they will post it for everybody in the, in, the, in the radio show, if so everybody can read with us. This is the verse, number, chapter 23, verse number 14. It says clearly, it's made for you in English. Then we made the sperm into a clot of concrete blood. Now, I want to ask you, according to which science in the world, the sperm will turn to be a clot? The sperm. There's no egg in there. This is number one. Secondly, in here it's speaking only about the sperm. So, if you say, if you connect this verse to other verses in the Quran, the one we mentioned, about the sperm of the man and the sperm of the woman, this is a proof that Allah even considers the women water is a sperm too, proving our point in the other, other, other side. But the main thing in here, the, the, main, the main mistake, is how the sperm turned to, into clot, and that clot is a completed blood. Can you explain to us? Yes. Okay. Um... If you may read it again, because it is not saying the sperm uh, to a clot, but into. And the word into refers to a process. If you may follow me. To and into are different in grammar, in English. Now, into is a process, meaning the sperm goes through a process. What is that process? In order to be turned to a clot, which is, of course, uh, 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 of, of, of congealed blood. That's the point you're missing. You want to make the sperm a clot while the Quran is telling you into a clot, meaning going through a process. And that process is the process of the sperm being introduced to to the, uh, to the egg, and that then the fertilization will come and go through that process in order to make a clot. And once again, the word into is important, as you may hear from my brother Nabil. You see, the, after the process of fertilization, and that is the joining of what's called the pro-nucleus with the germinal German vertical of the follicle, this is when you get fertilization. Then you have what's called the 2, 4, 6, 2, 4, 8, and then the blastula. The blastula stage, then the murula stage, then the blastocyst. The blastocyst is what would be congealed blood because it's all made from what's called the uh, blood islets that are present on the outside of the blastula and also the inner cell mass, which is also made from blood islands. So, in fact, there is no better description about this process better than the one that's present in the Quran. There's no better description of what the science now has confirmed that's present in the Quran if you really understood what was in the Quran. Okay, thank you. Well, I want you to open with me to the Quran. I want you to open with me to the Quran. Why you always want to go turn it back? You want to go to the Quran. Uh, what, what, what's wrong with Nikasir? Nikasir now is a Jewish guy. When you listen to Nikasir, you have to listen be on the level of Nikasir. And listen then you have to listen listen somebody else and put... It's my turn, turn to answer, please. please Nikasir doesn't understand what the blastocyst yeah, was. Yeah, Nikasir doesn't what the Muriela was. Nikasir doesn't know what the Nikasir was. Okay. Nikasir doesn't know what was. Nikasir doesn't know what the Nikasir 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 was. 
Southern Greece is completely yeah, nothing, and you, you, you are better more than him. That was you are saying to me now, listen, can, can I talk? We, we can talk at the same time. Let me talk for you now. Suddenly, let me talk, please. Let me talk, please. Let me talk, please. But Dr. Let me talk, please. Like, you, 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 you don't want me to talk. You know, you are no, trying no, to shut me up. I don't want you to tell me listen, that. Listen, listen. How come Ibn Kathir agree with me? How come? How come all Islamic scholars agree with me? What's wrong with Ibn Kathir? How Ibn Kathir suddenly, suddenly, let me speak. Suddenly, suddenly, Ibn Kathir. Because you wanted, you were looking for some. Something that is going to be, uh, yes, yeah, that fits Listen, your own. Let me, uh, let me, let me uh, talk, please. Really. Let, let that's me all talk, you want. Talk. You don't want people to hear, and there are people, they are listening, they are judging. I am giving a proof. The scholars of Islam agree with me, not with you. When you gave me the explanation now, your brother, he said, into, into, right? Read with me, Ibn Kathir, he is saying the following, that the not far, read with me, please. I, I give you the link. I hope they are posting it for you. I want you to open with me. Read with me, please. It says, and Islamic scholars agree with me. What's wrong with Ibn Kathir? How did Ibn Kathir suddenly, suddenly, let me speak, let me speak. Suddenly, suddenly, Ibn Kathir, he is. Because you wanted, you were looking for some, something that is going to be, uh, yes. Yeah, that fits your own. Let me, let me, let me talk, please. Let me talk, let me talk. You don't want people to hear, and there are people, they are listening, they are judging. I am giving a proof. The scholars of Islam agree with me, not with you. When you gave me the explanation now, your brother, he said, into, into, right? Read with me, Ibn Kathir, he is saying the following, that the not far, read with me, please. I, I give you the link. I hope they are posting it for you. I want you to open with me. Read with me, please. It says, and then we take the cloth into a little loom. The cloth into a little loom, and then he, uh, he said, say, we made the nutfa into a cloth. So he made the nutfa itself a cloth. This is very wrong. The cloth, will, it's not the nutfa, and the nutfa do not transform to be a cloth. Nutfa is simply very simple DNA message. We activate the egg of the women, have no blood, it is not a blood, and have nothing to do with the blood. And, and I want you to, I don't in front really of everyone. Well, you don't really understand the process. You are not describing the process. You don't know it. It's yeah, not I don't me. know what's your it's background, it's but let me you're tell a you that thing. I do have it's a PhD a in, 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 in cellular and molecular biology, and we have also with us, you know, Dr. Okay. Moeen Dean, who's also uh, had uh, he's a doctor in... Uh, uh, and he had a lot of extensive research on this issue. So, uh, yes. usually what you're describing is totally uh, out of your field, that I know that for sure from the way you're talking, that's one thing. The second is that you're is trying to say that the Quran says so. Now, there, we have is two individuals in this room that we have <laughs> the credentials and we teach at universities, and we know that what's in the Quran is better, there's no better description. Now you want to okay, go back okay. and tell me this and this and this and this. No, I'm not yeah, saying I mean, that. Listen. I am Sometimes it's better you, for you to listen. I'm showing you the Sometimes it's better me. for you to listen. I'm telling you, in this room here, there are two individuals who, who on a day in, day out, teach this process at, at medical institutions. And what you are describing is wrong from a medical process. So don't try to say that that's what the Quran is saying. You're trying to put it well, in the Quran. Well, no. It's very clear, my dear. It's very clear. You don't want to read your scholars' explanation. You are trying. You are trying. Okay. Listen, how the little loop little, the little became, became a flesh. One at a time. One at a time. Yeah, yeah, I would say you may also consider the time, and I know it's been two hours and 21 minutes, and uh, instead of arguing, I think the audience should actually benefit from this if we could really have a sincere and intellectual debate. And I think it's getting too late right here in Memphis. I don't know about you all, but uh, we would like, with your permission, uh, to probably end it here, call it a day, and if you want us some other day, some other time, we will be available if you really uh, call us on time and also that we may have time to get ready for any type of discussion you would like your audience to hear. And right now I'm showing 10.21 and we started at 8 o'clock. 
and we took the responsibility to come to your show for two hours, and it is 21 minutes past. With all due respect, we would like to ask you, with your permission, if we could uh-huh. call it today and conclude, okay? Okay. We can, we can force you to stay, guys. You know, I'm glad that we have this conversation, mm-hmm. and I hope you nobody gets upset or angry. We, no, we, no, we, no, no. I'm to a new one. You know, we are trying to prove our point, and you have the right to defend your faith. It's your faith, so nobody can blame you. Mm-hmm. Okay, and I'm, I'm glad to talk to you, and I hope we will, we will talk again. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I tell you guys, if we want to, uh, Christian friends, I know you, 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 your schedule is pretty tight. And let me say, I do appreciate uh, 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 all of you all uh, coming out tonight, uh, calling in tonight, and to gauge. I think it has been uh, a really very in-depth discussion, uh, one that uh, probably would need uh, an extension. But uh, time uh, would not afford us that tonight. Uh, I can uh, pick up again coming out tonight, uh, calling in tonight, and to gauge. I think it has been uh, a really very in depth discussion, uh, one that uh, probably would need uh, an extension, but uh, time uh, would not afford us that tonight. Uh, I can uh, pick up again. At another time, uh, this show airs at 10 p.m. Central Standard Time, Monday through Friday, and 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, I do have a guest on the show next Friday night at 7 p.m. that would be on for probably about 30 minutes. So uh, I don't know whether or not you guys are busy on next Friday night, but we can pick up another uh, debate. We can... uh, Pick up from when we left off at 8 p.m. next Friday night, if that's good with both sides. Uh, there again, I wouldn't want to superimpose. And, uh, well, I, well, you know, we wouldn't it's, go. It's, it's up to those gentlemen, and uh, if, they, if they are doing it right away, we can schedule that day, you know, for now. No problem. Yeah. Yes, next we'd, Friday be to, we'd be willing to answer to your invitation any time, but remember, you just called us yesterday, and we really did not want to make this in vain. That's why we came. And we have to cancel okay. our class in order to uh-huh. come to the show, and, uh, which, of course, we really appreciate your invitation. At some other time, you have Dr. Muin Dean's number. Call Dr. Muin because he's the one in charge with the media committee. And discuss uh-huh. with whatever he agrees with you. We go with that. The next Friday night at 8 p.m., the same time, does that is. Could you be available next Friday night at 8 p.m.? No, let, let, us, let us see first, you know, what they are planning to do. And because, honestly, I don't care much for, uh, with my respect to you, brother, I don't mean anything, you know. Okay. But I don't care much for, you know, radio show or anything. Uh, uh, because always it's in, in the same way, you know, you show them the proofs, you prove them wrong, and they still didn't want to read the proofs. I want to debate people who want to read my proofs not to say to me, give me a speech. So I prefer if we can get from their side somebody who will read what we will provide them, not somebody who will say to, say to me, you are wrong, you understand it wrong. You cannot, in Islam, explain yourself from yourself. You have to give reference. You have to give approves, and those approves have to be the scholars. I am not the one who is allowed to explain the Quran. He is not the one who is allowed to explain the Quran. All what we did in this debate is... Okay, you're you finishing this or you give it another lecture now? No, I'm just, you know, you can, you can go, brother. If you, if you are in rush, it's okay. I'm just, I'm just, just talking to the brother here. No, so it seems like you're giving if, us if, another lecture. If you want to if you wanna, if you wanna have a debate, we have at least to agree to read the proofs, to read the reference. Isn't it, isn't it sad that all the, that the proofs I, I showed, none of you accept to read? Simply because those proofs prove me right, prove you wrong, and this is why you are rejected to read them. Okay, when you so want to tell us today, say, you have to tell us ahead of time, and you have to say what are your, you know, the books that you're talking about, and all of these things, so that everything will be available and ready. You don't come yeah. in and just uh, drop out of the blues and say, you know, we want to do this and we want to do that. So you, this you is why it's a debate. Debate. I don't know. I'm not going to give well, he can't. He can't give. He can't give you. Uh, in our fairness to Chris Prince, he can't give you a transcript a week early of his uh, 
his daughters and debating his talking points. I mean, uh, Mr. Moderator, I think it would be wise enough uh, if people call Dr. Nguyen tomorrow and discuss with uh-huh. him for any other debate. And whatever you agree with him, we go with that. We are so organized okay. that we want things to follow really the way they should be. So please get in touch with Dr. Moran t- tomorrow as you have his number and Spell his name for whatever me. issue you want, and then whatever he tells you will be fine with us as well, okay? That was very yeah. nice so, talking to you all, and you have a good night. Okay. Thanks, guys, for coming. Uh, thank you, Christian Prince. Uh, thank you, yeah, Chris Prince, for coming. Uh, I, I think you've done an excellent job there. You know, I agree with you. If, if they're not willing to read the evidence, the proof that you give, then it, it's basically it. And they offer infertility there. But I'm going to try to schedule it next Friday night at uh, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, you know, if you, if you want to do that, tell me from now so I know that Friday, you know, uh-huh. and I, want, I want the date for sure because, you know, in your side it was showing one date, you know. For me, if I did not open your, my email, I was not going to call you anyway because uh-huh. in your side it was showing tomorrow. You see, there's a mistake in there. So I know. I thought. Yeah. yeah. So for me, I thought, you know, okay, you know, there's another date. So uh, actually, I, 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 we were lucky that uh, to open my email in the same time of the debate start, you know, the show start. So uh-huh. I told you. Otherwise, I would not know. So uh, call. And, and, and by the way, you know, uh, uh, take my advice. Those people, they will never read. They will do, you know, this is what they play their game. When they are debating someone as an American, he do not know. They were giving all kinds of speeches. A scientist proved to us in America, in Japan, in Thailand, in Chicago, and, 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 but all of this is false. You know, this is your scholars. This is what he said. If you are really an honest man, read. And this is why you see they just want to run. Did you notice? The other one is asking for a living, not us. Right. Because simply, they could, they could not make it. They are shocked. You know, they are shocked. And, and, and by the way, I'm not. A, I think you kind of. I think you kind of took them for a ride, Mr. <laughs> 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 anyway, you know, are you going to post the the, the whole recording in the in the site? Um, for uh, the, the show, the, next, the show, yeah, the next Friday night. No, no, I'm saying that it, the the video we have now is going to be posted. Yeah, it's going. Once I, once I hang up, once me and you are done, because we still screening. We got two minutes left. But once I hang up, it's going to uh, the system would uh, save the file and it will be post probably in another five minutes that you'll be able to listen to it. Or another two, okay, three thank minutes. you very much. So people yeah. can go and get. I, I want to say thank you for uh, for uh, inviting me, and I hope you did enjoy having. I enjoyed it, man. I tell you, you you're, you're great. <laughs> thank you, and you know we where to find it. me, right? You know where to find me if you need me. I do. I'm going okay, to find at 8 p.m. on next Friday night. And we'll just see what they say, okay? Let, let me know. Let me know. For me, I, I consider them they will not come because I, I can tell you from now, they are terrified. They saw something they are not ready for. This is why we start saying, oh, we are not ready. He told us yesterday. And, you know, a scholar in Islam, he does not need to be ready. You know? Uh-huh. You, don't, you are not ready about knowing your God. You are not ready about knowing your book. <laughs> now you need to be ready. You know? so if you are not ready, why you show up? Who is forcing you? you know, who, who told you to come? Say, I cannot, you know? Well, I think I contact them on, on, on Wednesday there because, uh, matter of fact, they just kind of got my phone call back, but, uh, yeah. but they, anyway, they all... It's an excuse, for, it's an excuse for, for their loss. No problem. Anyway, okay. brother, thank you very much. God bless you. All and right. the Lord support you in your mission. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. God bless you. Folks, this is going to end it on the Black Conservative Show tonight in our debate. And uh, we're going to uh, end this segment of the Black and Silver Show. We will be back, turning up again here shortly tonight on this segment of the Black and Silver Show. Uh, at 12 a.m., we will have another segment. And uh, so we hope to see you back then. Take care.